This convoy will be the largest one we have personally seen, but still medium size compared to the biggest ones the Allies put together. And how many escort vessels will assist us? Still only two. This is ridiculous. The command can't expect us to defend a convoy of this size with three ships. The sailing orders say that U-boat activity is rising. In the last month, there have been 25 merchant ships lost, an average of four per convoy. Any details along our routing? Yes. Radio intercepts place several groups of boats along our intended track. Any mention of air support? Yes, there should be good coverage along almost the entire route. The weather report looks good. Of course, the accuracy more than a few days out is always questionable. Yes. Do you recall the last forecast that was for good weather? Even the saltiest of the crew got seasick. Captain, on behalf of the crew, I can say we place our trust in your leadership to successfully complete the mission. And within a month, we will be home again. This is the first convoy for which I know my crew is fully trained. The previous crossings have provided ample experience against the enemy. It is also good that other ship's captains meet me when ashore to share experiences and tactical recommendations. As this war grinds on, the Allies continue to get better tactically, and our anti-sub technology is improving as well. We are to rendezvous with the RCN at Halifax. I hope the crew can take some liberty there. This is the first time I have been given a bigger convoy to lead. Seems like the HQ has laid their trust in me after all. We still have the same number of escorts, but their crews have become competent submarine hunters. I am pleased that the weather will be good, at least for the first half of the crossing. The sailing orders say to expect nearly full-time air patrols. If the flyboys can find a sub, we can sink it, or at least deny an opportunity to attack our convoy ships. Donuts has his boats spread out along our way. The Germans keep building new boats, the Allies keep building new ships. When will the tide turn in favor of one or the other? All escorts, this is the escort commander. Our convoy is approaching an unidentified merchant ship that appears to not be making way at bearing 052 range 6,000 yards from the guide. All escorts, maintain your patrol sectors and be especially wary of possible U-boat contacts. Stand by for further orders. Out. Maintaining station. Roger. Bloodhound out. Captain I. Officer of the deck, set general quarters. Set general quarters, I. General quarters, general quarters, all hands man your battle stations. Set condition zebra throughout the ship. Stern depth charge detail manned and ready. Main battery ports manned and ready. Engineering officer watch reports engineering manned and ready. Zebra set, four boilers online, max speed 32 knots. Electric plant split, all fire pumps online. Very well. All right, hello everyone, and welcome back to Let's Play Destroyer, Das Boot Hunter. Two thirds. All well, we have no head. contacts Two out thirds. here, Five but thirds. we're gonna be searching around with our sonar, seeing if there's something out Combat here. Combat sonar, new sonar contact. Hey, we'll Bearing speak of the devil. Zero. Five. We have contact Range. Abel, Bearing 054, 3100 yards. yards. New contact from sonar, Bearing. Okie dokie, well, Four. Maple, Range. you're gonna move up. A little bit abreast of the convoy, I'm directly ahead of it. Able. Time. 22.56. Combat sonar. Contact. He is beyond that ship somewhere. Five, three, I suspect. Range. 2,700 yards. Bearing steady. 2,700 yards. Eh, it might be between me and the ship, but... Anyway, we're gonna get up there. Sonar, can you hear anything? 
Combat sonar. Contact. Able. Now bears. Zero. Five. Three. Range. Two thousand. Three hundred yards. Combat sonar. Contact. Able. Now bears. Zero. Five. Four. Range. Two thousand. Two hundred yards. Very strong propeller noise. All right, I don't know what this guy's doing, but I'm gonna come right so I don't cross his track and crash into him. Yes, I know, that's why I'm moving to pass behind him. I say again, CBDR. Degrees right, I. Steady on course, zero, seven, two. All right, left 20 degrees rudder. What's he doing? Just keep on your normal course. What? Now you're in my way again. Jeez, I'm trying to find Abel here. Steady on course, zero, five, six. All engines ahead, two thirds. All engines ahead, two thirds. Aye, sir. Rudder, 30, degrees right. Rudder, 30, degrees right. Aye, sir. Anyway, we're well, getting back to our previous Rudder commentary on destroyers. During the naval battles of Guadalcanal from the 12th and 13th of November, 1942, Admiral Callahan again divided his destroyers into two columns. These were placed ahead and astern of the cruisers, which were in the middle. Now, neglecting to make good use of the strengths of each type of vessel, unfortunately, Destroyer Division 10 attempted to operate independently to make a tor torpedo attack, but they were recalled and held back. Hockey. Destroyers did have some success damaging the battleship Hiei during the battle with torpedoes. Eventually, it was appreciated that destroyers should be allowed to make torpedo attacks and then allowed to clear the area with cruiser gunfire following up their attacks. This was eventually understood in March of 1943, but the tactics would not be realized until November of that year, eight months later. The Battle of Vela Gulf on 6th and 7th August 1943 showed that destroyers could showed what destroyers could do when allowed to make surprise torpedo attacks. Zero. So that's a pretty famous battle where um, the uh, American destroyers, some of them under uh, Arleigh Burke, surprised the Japanese destroyer force in a night torpedo battle. Contact able. Now bears zero. Surface action group operations in the Solomons were fairly unique since once the Japanese lost that area. Uh, Imperial Japanese Navy destroyers went back to screening the combined fleet in anti-submarine warfare roles. The last surface action group action was off Biak on the night of 8th and 9th June 1944. Bloodhound, this is Hockey. Hockey lost contact. Baker, last known bearing. Two, okay, Hockey, we'll search right behind you, please. From Bloodhound. Combat zone. Only in the Battle of Surgao Strait did destroyers perform a coordinated destroyer and battleship attack. 1, the Battle of Samar nearby showed that despite aircraft, heavy units could close with carrier forces, forcing the destroyers to make torpedo attacks. Combat Similar defensive combat actions were used during the Battle of Komandorsky Islands on 26 March 1943, Zero. which allowed the U.S. cruisers and destroyers to escape. Contact. Able. Now bears. Zero. Three. In comparison Nine. to the Pacific and the Atlantic, destroyers saw very little surface very action. However, they did encounter large numbers of German S-boats and Italian MAS and German explosive motorboat boats <laughs> and human torpedoes in the European coastal areas. A German S-boat, a motor, motor torpedo boat, torpedoed two destroyers at Normandy and destroyers sank four German corvettes during the invasion of southern France, along with various other smaller craft. Regain contact. Able. Bearing. Two. Two. Well, I dropped a little early on that. That run. Okay, so we got Charlie here. Hockey's going after Baker. Maple, this is Bloodhound. Proceed. Maple, get yourself up here. They seem to be all coming from one direction. Able, now bears one, eight, seven, range, 500 yards. Estimated depth, medium. Now in the closing stages of the Pacific War, smaller Japanese craft were also found um, by destroyers as well, adding value to the automatic batteries, uh, which were now being placed on ships. Picket duty by destroyers off Okinawa in 1945 were largely conducted by Fletcher-class destroyers and the later Sumners. Post-war, the earlier high forecastle destroyers went into reserve status and they are pretty much almost never mentioned in, post in most literature. Uh, following that war. All right. Well, Sonar, let's combat. keep maneuvering around. 
Well, that zero, wasn't bad. We got some near hits. Three, but zero, mostly misses. Through zero three one sonar I. I wonder if the game is intentionally making Maple, um, Maple. the depth charges now. a little Proceed bit less effective engage. as Roger. the Maple campaign engaging. moves on. New I don't course. know. Because, I mean, earlier zero, zero. they course. used to be pretty effective, zero. but now not so much. I wonder if it's Fire. because the All submarines or flank. the U-boats are flank. moving Fire. more evasively and they're adapting their tactics more to avoid us, or if on the Fire. game is sort of artificially, you know, making depth charges weaker Fire. or less effective. Target bearing. Two, eight, four, range. Fire. 3,500 yards. Fire. Well, in any case, uh, that's all I'll talk about for um, kind of destroyer historical destroyer commentary in this one. I'll continue on in another Fire. later video. I mean, we've got plenty to go. We're only on the, uh, what is this, the Fire. fourth mission? <laughs> First battle of the fourth mission. Fire. We got time. Last We're like barely two, even halfway eight, through the game. There's supposed five, to be, what, eight last missions? Range, 3,200 yards. Sonar, combat, investigate arc. I don't know, it might four, be interesting. One, two, three, or three, a complete one, and utter chore, sonar, if you know what I mean. Sonar. Regain contact. Because like I've said before, this game, it's it's kind of a one-trick pony, which is unfortunate because it has a lot of potential. I don't know if Iron Wolf Studios is still supporting this game, if they're going to release any new content in the future, but as I mentioned several times before in my videos of this game, you only really do one thing. You sail around, you drop depth charges, and you occasionally shoot at U-boats. Fire one. Yeah, Fire that's what two. you do, right? You switch targets, you order your escorts Fire around. Three. Maybe you have an aircraft, so they're going to drop some Surface depth charges, but... Contact. Bearing what do you zero, do in this game? Anti-submarine warfare. Range. 3, Sail around yards. in circles. Bridge. Oh, there it is. Bridge. Okay, we're going to make a run and drop depth charges. Bearing. Now we go around zero, and do it again, six, two, and then we do it again, three, and then we do it again. Three, so you don't do anything else in this game. So like I said, it's it's kind of monotonous. Whether or not that's intentional, I don't know. I mean, it's not like anti-submarine warfare was, as we've seen, is anything to, you know, write home about. It's just like, what do we do? Oh, we hunted submarines. We dropped depth charges on them. But, I mean... Historically, that's basically what they did, and as well, along with destroyer escorts, but you see, there we hit fire. the dividing line between historical realism and gameplay. Stand by fire. fire. In terms of gameplay, this game is actually fairly bland. You don't do fire. anything else in it. But historically, it is relatively accurate, I suppose. Fire. Just not much variety in its gameplay. Fire. So, yeah. Take it or leave it, I guess. Sonar, this is the captain. I mean, I don't Report outright active. hate the game, but two, I just one, think it's four, getting two, very, three, very monotonous. Zero, Lost Fire. contact. Just to be honest. Last bearing, zero, seven, zero. Last range, 3,400 yards. All right, we have lost active all contacts, two, so... One, four, Who knows three, where they are? Zero, four. Aye, sir. Stand by to fire. Surface radar has regained contact. Dog, bearing, zero, niner, five, range, 4,500 yards. Stand by to fire. Target bearing, zero. All right, nine, let's six, target dog eight, and let's four, shoot nine, at him. 600 yards. Contact With our five-inch guns. Now bears, fire. zero, niner, seven, range, 4,500 fire. yards. I figure when these U-boats are on the service and we, we can shoot at them using radar directed gunfire, then I can just go ahead and flank, just haul butt towards them. Close the distance a little quicker. Surface radar has regained contact. Charlie, bearing two, five, one, range. 2,400 yards. Target bearing. Fire. One, zero, four, range. 4,100 yards. Contact. Fire. Dog now bears. One, zero, five, Fire. range. 4,000 yards. Fire. Fire. All engines ahead. Two, 
two-thirds. All engines ahead, two-thirds. Right, let's try and reacquire him on sonar. Lost contact. Dog, last bearing. One, zero, five. Last range, 3,600 yards. Hockey, this is Bloodhound. Engage contact. Bloodhound, this is Hockey. Hockey lost contact. Baker, last known bearing. Two, three, six. Range, 4,500 yards. Oh, great, now we got easy. Surface radar has a new contact. Bearing, three, zero, five. Range, 4,600 yards. Bridge, combat. New surface contact from radar. Bearing, three, zero, five. Range, 4,600 yards. I designate contact, easy. Time, 23, 19. Combat sonar, new sonar contact. Bearing, one, one, two. Range, 3,300 yards. Roger. Well, in other news, speaking of submarines, I should say, I uh, recently completed reading uh, Tom Clancy's The Hunt for Red October. Seven range. I mean, it's about high time I got around to reading that book. I tried reading it like, God, maybe around 25 years ago or something. Because I was really into submarines and the Cold War and like espionage and secret agents and stuff like that at the time. So my parents were like, oh, you should read The Hunt for October because they had already read it. And they were from, and were familiar with the movie as well, so. 200 yards. But I tried reading it. I got like 40 pages into it, and I stopped like, oh, this is boring. I don't get it. You know, so. But now that I'm older, of course, you know, I can appreciate writing a bit more. And I read it. It wasn't bad. It wasn't amazing either. I'd say it was good. Maybe very good, but. I don't know. Then again, it was Tom Clancy's first book, so maybe his writing style had not quite matured yet. One, two, one. But I thought The Hunt for October as a book was mm, decent. Good, I'd say. I don't have a problem with his technical writing because I can understand most of it. You know, and it's not exactly entirely accurate. And I, from my understanding, Clancy would intentionally um, change some of the details to make it inaccurate so people wouldn't try to use his books as like a reference source. Bloodhound, this is but of course, Clancy kind of um, revitalized and heavily popularized the techno thriller, the military fiction genre. And of course, they had to go and make a bunch of movies from this stuff, so. Range, 100 yards. Estimated depth, shallow. Lost contact, Baker, last bearing, two, six, seven. Last range. But I thought the book was okay. I think parts of it could be excised. I mean, it really didn't need some of the subplots, like the subplot with the uh, with Cardinal, the um, the CIA agent in the Kremlin. Although, of course, his later book, The Cardinal of the Kremlin, serves as a direct sequel to, hunt, to The Hunt for October, but I think some of the parts of the book could have been taken out and the narrative would not really have suffered. Again, I don't have really a, have a problem with Clancy's writing and the technical details, but I just think parts of it kind of dragged on and the plot is sort of padded out in a way. I think kind of it, it tries to be a little bit too broad and bites off a little bit more than it can really realistically chew. All escorts, this is the escort commander. An unidentified merchant ship in the convoy's vicinity has most likely been sunk by an enemy U-boat. Be on heightened alert for flow. Combat sonar. Yes, yeah, so what else could it have been sunk by? Three, five, six. I don't see any battleships around here, or other or other destroyers, or cruisers, or whatever, or aircraft. Last bearing. Zero, two, three. Now, in contrast, I do feel like the movie *The Hunt for October*, which was released in 1999 or 1990, I should say, and directed by John McTiernan of *Die Hard* fame. I actually find the movie to be a little bit better than the book uh, because the movie kind of condenses the plot. It makes it a little bit more streamlined, concise, and it just flows a little bit better. So it doesn't have the kind of these weird narrative starts and stops like I felt the book did. Again, that's not to say that the book is bad. I just I feel that the movie streamlines the narrative a bit more. And it's more easily digestible, I would say. Whether or not I think the book is better than the film, eh, it has its up pros and cons, I'd say. Lost contact. Oh, there Baker. goes another ship. Last bearing. Two, six, eight. Last range. Five thousand. But in some ways, I prefer yards. the film. New York Enterprise. Perhaps that's partially nostalgia because I grew up watching the film a lot when I was young, so. Right. 
And Combat every time I'm reading, you know, Ramius' character, I can't help but hear Sean Connery's voice. We sail into history. Yeah. yeah, I can't help but picture Sean Connery as Captain Ramius or uh, Scott Glenn as Commander Bart Mancuso or, you know, Alec Baldwin as Jack Ryan. Zero, one, five. Investigating arc two. It's hard for me to kind of five, picture the characters zero, without seeing zero, the actors one, themselves, five, you know, or five, James Earl Jones as, as um, Admiral Saki, Greer. Saki contact. Charlie, Jack Mary, boy, two, get yourself three, in here. One, Jesus, you look like hell. Roger, Aki searching. Now listen up, Commander. I torpedo Mary, did not self-destruct. You heard it hit range, the hall, and I yards. was never here. Combat sonar. Contact. Dog. You gotta now admit that movie had a real three, darn good three, cast. Range, so. <laughs> yards. Estimated yep. depth. Shallow. Very much kind of a thinking man's thriller action movie. Fire one. Of course, you see a lot of people react Fire to two. it nowadays on YouTube. There's like Fire maybe a three. good dozen Combat different sonar. reactions from people Lost on contact. YouTube, and Dog. half of them are like, Last I don't get it. Zero. I don't understand three. what's going on. Eh, you know. Last so. Range. It's clearly a movie of a different time, you might say. Surface radar has a new contact. Bearing two, five. You gotta know five, a little something range, about submarines or be willing to kind of wrap your head yards, around submarines, sonar. I think, to really this appreciate the, the movie and to appreciate the book. One, seven, seven, two, two, six. But now that I'm done seven, with uh, The Hunt for October, I've moved on to, um, contact. Able, to uh, Red Storm bearing, Rising, two, actually. Five, I decided not to go three, ahead and read the Cardinal of the Kremlin. I thought, you know what, you know, I always hear about Red Storm Rising, you know, it's one of the few novels that Clancy wrote that does not feature Jack Ryan, but it's basically, you know, like, the hypothetical what if World War III kicked off between the Americans or NATO and the Soviet Union. So a lot of people talk about that. You don't hear many people talk about a lot of Clancy's other books. Yards. Contact and then, of course, there's, you know, Patriot Games and Clear and Present Danger, of course, which movies were made uh, for that as well. Although, mm, based on my opinion and some other people I know, whether or not you like Harrison Ford playing Jack Ryan is debatable. Personally, I'm, I'm with my parents and some of my friends. I like Alec Baldwin as Jack Ryan because Jack Ryan is, I think, is kind of meant to be this everyman, right? He's kind of a nerdy, bookwormish CIA analyst, you know, whereas on the other hand, Harrison Ford is not really the everyman. You know, Harrison Ford is Han Solo. Harrison Ford is Indiana Jones. He's kind of this larger-than-life, you know, rugged, you know, all-American hero. That's what Harrison Ford is. But Alec Baldwin, I think, plays Jack Ryan as this more kind of nerdy, you know, analyst kind of guy. More of an every every man. Lost contact. So I don't know. Maybe you 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 have a different opinion, but I prefer Alec Baldwin as Jack Ryan. Four thousand three hundred yards. Bloodhound, this is Maple. Maple regain contact. Baker, bearing. Three. Anyway, two, so. 900 yards from Bloodhound. Combat sonar. The convoy has passed us Eight. by, so Last I've just been trying two. to hold them off for Eight. now. Three. Last range, 2,600 yards. Roger. Hockey engaging contact. Maple. Maple, this is Bloodhound. Attack contact. Baker. Roger. Maple attacking contact. Baker. Sonar. This is the captain. Investigate arc. Two, six, seven, two, three, five, seven. Investigating arc. Two, six, seven, through three, five, seven. Aye, sir. Five hundred yards. Surface radar has regained contact. Dog bearing three, zero, four. Range one thousand six hundred dog. Contact dog now bears three, zero. Four range 1,600 yards. Stand by to fire. Why uh, can't we fire? Three, fire. Zero. Four range 1,600 yards. Blank. All engines fire. ahead blank. Aye, sir. Contact dog now bears fire. three zero four range 1,600 fire. yards. Target bearing three zero four range 1,600 yards. Why can we not fire? I don't think he's so close that we can't depress the guns. 
Target bearing. Fire. Or maybe he is. Range. 1,400 yards. Nope, oh, something Contact. else exploded. Dog. Now bears. Three, zero, four. Range. Oh, he must have got that one. Pride of yards. Queensland is sinking. Oh, I guess the pride of Queensland was in our way. That's why we couldn't shoot. Oh, and maybe those other ships ahead of us as well. Dog, last bearing, three, zero, three. Last range, 1,100 yards. Bloodhound, this is Maple. Maple lost contact. Baker, last. Oh, there's a periscope bearing. right there ahead of us. Range, 3,100 yards from Bloodhound. Yep, charges are loaded. Let's drop on them. Dang it, there goes another ship. Alright, stand by. Fire. Fire one. Paradise Blossom. Maybe I dropped a little prematurely there. Lost contact. Baker. Last barrier. Three. Niner. Four. Alright, circle Last back range. around and get those survivors yards. right there in those lifeboats. Yeah, it was a little contact. early when Baker. I rolled my depth charges. Two. Nine. Five. Range. Two thousand. Two hundred yards. Bridge. Starboard lookout. Merchant ship. CBDR. Bearing. Two. No, nine, we'll be okay. One. Convoy's Bridge. passing around us. I We're passing again. behind them. CBDR. Surface radar has regained contact. Charlie, bearing two, seven, one. Range, 4,900 yards. We've lost Paradise Blossom. All ships, maneuver to avoid. Combat sonar, contact. Baker, now bears, three, zero, three. Range, 2,000 yards. Estimated depth, shallow. Bloodhound, this is hockey. Hockey made a combat sonar. Lost contact. Baker. Last bearing. Three. The enemy is retreating. All escorts return to formation and resume sonar responsibility. Well, we managed to drive them off, apparently. Okay. I gotta pick up these survivors, though. Well, I got a feeling we didn't do too great. This is the defeat screen. Yeah, taste the bitter defeat in your coffee, Captain. Well, yeah, minor defeat. Four ships lost, no boat sunk. We rescued 41, some survivors. The last battle was a close one, but we prevailed. In this war of attrition, the Allies' industrial output will overwhelm the Germans eventually. But until then, we must fight every battle like our personal lives depend on it. While no loss is acceptable, today's low losses mean most of the war supplies will make it to the destination. The U-boat commanders definitely played their cards right. Not only were they hard to find, but even harder to kill. The tactical situation was such that we were able to help the survivors from a lone merchant crossing our path. I know this put the Jansen and the other ships at risk, but saving those lives was worth it. I think I'm quite happy with how things are going for now. More bad luck. Ice is all around us. This will slow us down even more and provide the U-boats with better concealment. Let's just pray we can come out of this one safe and sound. 